Right. Hello, my name is Jackie Clore. I'm a physical therapist here. Um, welcome to our fourth parent in service of the year, um, CCI dogs and other um, service dogs. Mm -hmm. Teresa is an expert in service dogs. She's had AJ for four years, five years, and then dogs before that mm -hmm. as well. Um, and so, and she's a physical therapist here. She's amazing. We all go to her for all of our PT questions. She's our resident expert. So this hopefully will be informative for all of you. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm, I'm Teresa. Um, this is AJ. AJ's been working here for um, six years. So I've had him for six years. And then I've had service dogs since 2010. And then I've worked with service dogs since 2004 um, when I was at, at St. Vincent. So um, so AJ is through, um, AJ, um, so AJ is through the um, Canine Units for Independence, and this is obviously the organization that I had the most um, uh, information about, but they are, um, they've been doing this for over 40 years, and they do all of their own breeding, um, and they're, they're located in Santa Rosa, California, um, so that's where their breeding program is, and so they breed the Yellow Lab, the Golden Lab, um, and Golden Retrievers are the only three breeds that they will that they will breed. Um, and some of them are are full bred, and then some of them will be will be cross, and most of them are cross. So LJ L, AJ is a cross, so we call him um, an LGX, a Lab Golden Cross um, Special Edition, right? <laughs> um, so they um, they rotate. They rotate through the alphabet um, when they're doing their breeding. So he actually came from an I litter. So all the dogs had an I name. And his name was Igor the Third. Um, <laughs> that I got him. Yeah, that's my response too. <laughs> so um, I got him as a successor. My previous dog um, passed from cancer. And so um, when I got him, I um, had I've been through I've been through team training three times. Um, I went, we got a second dog for St. Vincent. My first dog was St. Vincent, and then um, I did AJ um, when I was here um, for their play. Um, so when I was getting recertified, getting checked out for my public access, I told my instructor, it's an incredibly going to change his name. It's like, just an ugly name if he's not an ugly dog. And he was like, you know, corporate does not like that. I'm like, I, I, I understand. I was trying to come up with something that wouldn't be in circulation um, with a, you know, a, a current a CCI dog. So I came up with AJ. And... Um, he said, oh, that's my daughter's name. And I said, well, we're good then, right? <laughs> no, no problem there. So, um, so yeah, so when they, so they had the puppies, um, they do, they have uh, homes that they do the breeders in. So they are um, you know, kind of still in a home environment. And then when the puppies are six weeks old, they're flown out um, to all the different regions. So they have um, a volunteer pilot program that uh, flies these puppies around. And um, <clears throat> so their training centers are in Ohio, New York, um, Florida, uh, Texas, um, and, and Santa Rosa. Um, so that's the other one. So, so there's five um, training centers. So our training center, we are the North Central Region, which is in Ohio. Um, so it's in um, it's in New Albany, Ohio, and they just built a new training center, which is really exciting. And um, it has dorms, it has facilities. So when you go, um, you have to go. You have to go for two week training. And that's when you're matched with the dog. They do their trainings in February, May, August, and November. And you can't specify, you know, with school schedules and all that stuff, but they'll call you, um, like we got picked, you know, for um, a November team training. And if you can't go, or if someone's having surgery, or there's just a life event, you've been on the wait list for two years, right? You don't know what life looks like. They'll school you along. They'll just put you into the next one, but they probably have a dog ready for the specific skills that you have. And so sometimes they'll hold that dog for three months too for you. Um, so um, I have a brochure for everybody. Um, if you guys you know, just wanna look at that. I carry pocket brochures as well um, in the vest because that's just something that um, when I'm out in the community, I, you know, I try to be a good ambassador for CPI. Um, so the application uh, process takes a lot of steps. And the reason it takes a lot of steps is because they want to make sure that's a really good fit. That it's, and I had I had to go through all the same steps that you as individuals will go through. Um, but the dogs are trained, um, so they're in they're in uh, a puppy home, a puppy raiser home. So when he got flown to Columbus, Ohio, 
um, they picked him up at the airport and then he had a puppy raiser that was assigned to him for 16 months. And so they have to be in obedience classes. So if they live near the training center, they do it you know, there, which they did here It's at um, uh, First Friends in Fishers. And so they offer the three classes. They know um, <clears throat> what, the, what the curriculum is as far as like what commands are gonna be teaching the dog. And so they, they do the puppy classes and they report to CCI monthly on how things are going. And a dog can be released at any time if, if there's things that just aren't going right with their training. So as, as they're going along with their training, um, when they are, so they're taught not to bark. Like right away, puppies will get a squirt of vinegar if they're, um, or bop. You can even little, they have a little extra bell here, they can get a little bop. So they're uh, taught not to bark, not to whine, not to chew on anything. And so they'll get that squirt of vinegar from the very beginning to not bark. Because a, a service dog to be in a public environment can't bark, right? We could be asked to leave if the dog is barking or the dog is poorly groomed. Those are the two reasons a service dog could be asked to leave. Um, so the dogs are taught not to bark. Um, as long as they're housebroken and they're not barking, when they're six months old, they get a yellow vest and they start going places publicly. And so that's how they um, you start integrating the dog um, to different things. So AJ was raised by a forensic engineer and um, AJ went to his workplace and was taught to lay in a bed and be out of sight, right? Which is a lot of what he does here, right? <laughs> so he was taught to be there in his bed and kind of be out of sight. And then um, he did, he's done 20 flights um, with Chris. So he would fly around the country when he would do different things and AJ was just, you know, was his companion. Um, and then they do lots of different things with like the puppy raising groups and, and, and he took them to, you know, basketball games where basketballs are flying around and, and um, took them a lot of different things. And then they, when I, when you do the application, they know what I need in a dog. And so Chris had actually taken it to a horse barn as well. So that's just something they knew in his back history that he's going to be okay at a, at a horse barn. Um, so when they're going through the training process about, you know, that, that 16 months, they have a matriculation ceremony during one of the graduations. Graduations are a big deal. And I cry at everyone I go to, even though I don't know anybody, because the, the stories are just amazing. And so they have a matriculation ceremony where they get a special cape and they get turned in. And then, and then boot camp comes in and hits them hard. Um, so they're at the training center for six months. And that's when they're um, really fine tuning all those 40 commands that the dog is being taught. So they're taught to be a working service dog for somebody with a disability. Um, so they can be placed as um, a service dog for somebody with a disability. They can be placed with um, an, a, a wounded veteran. Um, they can be placed as a companion animal for a child um, with a disability. And then you as the parent would be the handler you know, facilitating what the child needs. Um, the child can be as independent as possible, but you're the one that's licensed for public access to be the handler of the dog. Um, and then we are a facility, so we're, we're a medical care. And so I had to go through the same you know, stringent application process. They also do hearing dogs for hearing impaired. You have to be 18 to have a hearing dog. And those are specially, they have a special program in Santa Rosa where they do that. I have some kids with like cochlear implants and that type of thing. And they would do well with the dog now, but they wouldn't, <clears throat> they would probably just pair them with a companion dog and not a hearing dog until they're actually, you know, 18. Um, and so those dogs, it's a little bit different, um, you know, programming with those, but um, like I met a man who, um, he was functioning and fine and didn't feel like he needed like a hearing dog, but he was traveling in a hotel and he'd taken his hearing aids out when he was showering and the fire alarms had all gone off and he didn't know because he couldn't hear and open the curtains and realized that the building was on fire. And he was like, I think I need a hearing dog, you know, that can alert me when you know, things like that are, are going on. Um, so, the, um, so when you're looking at a companion animal, when you're going through the application process, and I'll pass out another, um, another thing for you. The application process, the first step starts with um, basically online. You go into um, the, their website, um, it's on here, and, and you click on the North Central Region, um, and then you're, then you're going you're gonna, to, you're basically going to request an application. And when you're requesting um, that application, um, there are 
things to say and things not to say so for what you're looking for the dog and i've had families that are great candidates and they get a no and i and i'm like why you know why did this person get a no because they're a great candidate i don't don't understand and it's just certain things that you answer in the the request that it, it just makes them say no Sometimes a no is given just because of volume, because they're just getting too many applicants and they can only you know, train so many dogs. Um, right now with COVID, the weirdest thing is their uh, wait list is, is short right now. Just a lot of people didn't apply during COVID. And so um, it's it's really nice you know, to, you know, to kind of know that you have to be five years old when you hit submit on that application. So um, I think they're really thinking that the child when they're just a tad bit older than five will be ready for more independence and benefit from you know, from the dog. So, so that first request, um, so what they're looking for in those answers of the questions is you have to think of these dogs have public access, right? So you need to answer according to what the dog is going to do for them in public. What what things are going to, you know, they're going to open doors, they're going to pick up dropped items. Um, if you're you know, you have to think if your child has trouble in like noisy, crowded environments, the dog's going to help them. If you have lots of medical appointments, the dog's going to go with you. If you have to have blood draws, if you have to have, you know, all these things that are scary to you, your buddy is going to be there with you to help you with all those things. So it just becomes that constant, um, you know, with you. What, um, what the dogs don't do, um, they, they, they don't keep you safe. So they're not like for elopement. Um, they don't, um, if you want a dog for um, seizures, um, that they're not trained for that. They'll pick them off. If you're, if, if the individual has seizures often enough, they will know when it happens and they will, but that's not what their training is. Um, so those are some things that I think, you know, families have, have asked, um, you know, for these dogs to do and that's, that's not what they're trained to do. So that's when you'll get like a no um, request of that. Do you have any questions about that first, um, that first click, that first one that you send in submitting that request for the application is, is if you get through that gate, the other gates will usually go fine. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's just the hardest one. And I'm happy you can grab my card and my email. I've, I've helped people like, let's say it like this, you know, I, I, and I just try to help guide them a little bit just so that it's clean, you know, when, when you send that in. So um, that, that's really helpful. Um, so then the next thing when you're, when you're doing that is um, you will get the application to fill things out. And it's, it's a lot of pages of information, but they want to know like, what's your daily schedule like? What, what is Monday through Friday like for you? Are you busy? Do you have a lot of appointments? Do you have chaos? Do you have a lot of stuff going on? Or are you just like a quiet family that doesn't have much going on? You know what? They're just kind of looking for that. You know, um, we have 10 hour days, crazy chaos, lots of stuff going on. Um, it's busy and, and they're long days. And so AJ is a dog that, you know, that can take that. And so they kind of want to know just what life is, is like for you. You'll fill out information, um, just a nutshell of your child. You know, are they ambulatory? Are they, um, you know, um, what, you know, kind of what their cognitive level is? What is their level of assist with like dressing and daily care and those kind of things? So you're just filling out that nutshell of, um, of what your child is like. Um, and, they'll, and they'll get to questions like, do you have other pets in the house? That's okay. If you have another dog at home, you're just going to have a different set of rules for your service dog than you do for your pet dog, right? Um, and it's okay if you have cats or you have other things, but they're just, they want to know these things because they they want to make sure that the dog does well with other dogs, right? And these guys, are to, they're trained to be very submissive, so they're probably going to be more submissive than anything, you know, with, with your other dog who's probably getting territorial because that's been their home longer, right? And so they'll help you. They're super helpful um, with working through those things. So, so that application, um, that you know, the full one, um, they just you know ask a lot of questions. Do you have a fenced in yard? Um, it's fine if you don't. Um, you're gonna tether. You're gonna tether the dog when they're outside, right? Because they're never ever meant to be off leash. Um, they always have to be in a contained. You know, if you're gonna play ball, you might go to a tennis court and play ball where there's 
a fence around there, right? So they're just going to help you problem solve ways of keeping your dog, um, your dog safe. Um, then you get a telephone interview, and it's the same. They'll ask questions, and then and then they'll just they'll ask you just some. If you took your son to school, and your team has to have public access, right? So you and your son and the dog are a team. But if if your son went to school and you're in the car with the dog and it's 100 degrees and you need to go into the grocery, what do you do? They're just asking you stuff. Like, you're not gonna leave the dog in the car, right? You're, you're parents. <laughs> um, you're gonna go home and drop the dog off and then you're gonna go back to the store, right? You're gonna problem solve that situation because you technically can't you know, go, into, go into the store. So they're just gonna ask you just some very basic, like common sense questions and you'll do fine with it. Um, then you get the medical professional um, packet. And um, I will tell you, don't take it to your doctor, bring it here to your therapist. I filled out a gazillion of them. And it's basically, again, um, just a nutshell. Um, you know, they're just gonna ask questions like, um, do you think, um, they kind of, we'll just give a nutshell picture about like, if you're ambulatory, non-ambulatory, what, what your prognosis is, what, um, you know, what things, do you feel like you, would benefit yes you've been working with aj for this amount of time um and then they'll ask like um so team training is two weeks and so it's classroom and it's working with the dogs and so they'll just ask like what your tolerance you know, to that is and um we're always going to say it's good with help if you need help because that you know you might have two people that go with you like you might have somebody that could go and help you with liam while you're you know, mm -hmm. sitting because it's a lot of information. Like you are taking in a lot of stuff in the classroom part and really trying to figure out, you know, everything. And then the, the hands-on working, you know, generally with kids, that's the best part, right? But the classroom stuff is that but they work with you on on that. So, so we're all gonna say it's good that you can that you'll tolerate it. And then um as you're in, in any all of these steps, you don't want to sit on it. You want to keep it going because like if you started this in, you know, August, and I haven't really been keeping up with all the steps in December, they they wipe it, okay, and then you're gone, you've missed it. So you got to keep you know going with the steps and not let anything um, get stagnant. So then if you've made it through everything, which generally, like I said, if you get through that first gate, it all it all goes smoothly. Um, you go, you get invited to Ohio. No, he's fine. Oh, he's not eating that much. Um, then you get invited um, to Ohio for um, a one-on-one -on -one interview. And um, the one-on-one -on -one interview um, is, they'll give you, they'll, um, you'll get to tour the facility, which is really nice. So you can see it and you can kind of understand what you're going to be you know, doing for two weeks when you're there. And they, um, so they'll tell you about CCI a little bit more. And then um, you work with some dogs. And so you, you have a dog and you're, you know, you're walking around with God and they teach you um, sit, um, shake, let's go, and maybe a down. And then, and so these guys get, um, they every command to have a beginning, a request, a response from the dog, and then an end. And the end is either good job, good boy, you did a great job, or a correction, right? You didn't do what I asked. And so um, they're going to teach you how to do a correction. They bring a little bolster with a with a choke collar and they teach you how to do the correction. And then basically they're looking, they're gonna trip. These are dogs that are probably gonna um, be graduates soon. So these are pretty pretty well trained. Some of them might be a little knuckle heady still, figuring it all out. But they're gonna they're gonna trick them with food. They're gonna be like trying to get the dog to come and get the food that they've got. And they're gonna throw some food out. And they, they're basically seeing like, no, don't. They're seeing if you are, are you a strong handler? You're like, no. <laughs> You know, and it's fine either way if you are. Um, and and your child is probably gonna have um they have the blue leash and you have a longer um they have this leash, the shorter one, and you have a longer blue leash. So you're gonna have a control and your child and your child can participate too. They always want that because that's it's for the child, right? Um and so they're just looking to see if you are you are you strong, are you Careful, are you like what is it like? And they're also just looking to see you know how your child is doing, you know, during this practice too. And so you might work with like two or three dogs and you're so nervous. Like you do you do it all along, right? Like you forget to like no, and then and then 
or like they did it and they're like, well, pet your dog until oh, good job. Because like, you're, you, you're so nervous and you just mess up the whole time. I mean, even my second go round, I, I mess up all the time, right? You just forget because you're so, you're being judged, right? People are looking at you like, oh, am I going to make this application happen? Um, and so, but you'll do, you'll do fine and, and the dogs do fine. And then, and then they take you for your one-on-one -on -one interview. And um, that's when they just, they really want to see your child and they really want to see what this dog needs to do for you. And, and I know you had to face about barking. Um, some of the dogs, and AJ won't do it. He's, he's like, it's trained out of them. But some of the dogs do have a speak command. Um, you know, if I, um, if your child, um, you know, got up and went to the back and they fell and they need help, they can tell the dog to speak and the dog's going to bark and you're going to like, okay, they never bark. So I know if I hear the dog barking that they need me. And so if, like if you're outside and you're like, I'm going to go change my laundry real quick and they're barking, you know that something happened that you, you need to go attend to your child. And so, and that's just something that they want to know because I, I'm able-bodied, I don't need a barker. So AJ doesn't do it, but they, but they will, you know, they want to know all the things that they can specifically um, you know, train for you. And if your child is in a chair, um, like I met a lady at the fall festival, she's on the wait list and she has a, a pretty tall power chair. Um, you know, they're going to get a dog that's going to react. It's going to respond well to a chair and be able to, you know, um, be comfortable with all of that. So they, they just want to know all, all of those things. And so when the dogs are in team training for that six months, they go and do lots of outings. They go places, um, they go to malls, they go to crowded things, they go to nursing homes, they go to all kinds of stuff. And they knew he did well with children and he did well with chaos. Nothing really seemed to bother him. So they knew, they look at their personalities too, as far as how they're making those matches and what the skill set is. And I'm a strong handler. I'm firm. I'm, you know, I'm tough. And there are things that he doesn't like to do, but if he could have maybe not have graduated for those, he doesn't like grades. He doesn't like um, our ramps. He doesn't like open steps. There's just things that he just doesn't, he doesn't like to do, but I made him do it. He has to do it. And, and I'm firm. I'm firm. I need a quick responder. Kids are fast and I need a dog that's quick and going to respond quickly. So I have to give quick, firm corrections sometimes. And, but I don't want a dog that's going to shake and be like, oh my gosh, correct me. Because I don't want the kids to think I hurt it, right? I don't want them to think that Miss Teresa is mean and she hurt AJ. So he's, I'm tough. He's tougher. He's stoic. He handles it, and so we're we're a good a good match, a good team. Um, so the so the interview process, yeah. Oh, I, and you guys stop me anytime. Ask any questions. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> I just want to ask the question again about because you said there was a speak command, like mm -hmm, and they mm -hmm. depart, the child can fix it. But what if your child is nonverbal and you're in the other room and they fall and you might hear them fall, but you might not hear them fall, like. So how does she have a device? Yeah, she has a device, but the device isn't always with her. You know, and I mean, we, we're talking two years from now because Zoe won't be five until, mm -hmm. you know, next year. But okay, they, this is a question. They love, this team of people in Ohio love things like this. They love to solve problems and make it work for you. So do we put a switch on him that, that mm -hmm. you hit and it says speak? Do we put something up? on his collar that you could hit and it says speak because he's always going to have a collar on, right? Yeah. I mean, they're so good at figuring stuff like that out to make it happen, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, love okay. it. Okay. Okay. I know they are so creative with helping and making things work and making the kids as independent as possible. That's that's just one of the things I, I love about them. Okay. But, Thank you for responding. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if there's any questions anytime, you just stop me because I can talk forever about um, okay, so that so you're there for the in-person interview, and that's when they're going to pull you in, and that's when like you're going to ask those kind of questions, right? You're going to have your list of questions. You have your list of questions, just as many as they're going to fire at you, right? Because you want to know these things and how this is going to work, and then they're going to they're just going to they 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 really just want that visual of parent and child and child is that they can kind of know what what kind of dog is going to be a fit for you. So, and then after that, after you're there for Ohio. For your in person, it takes about three hours. Um, then is when you get the letter that you got accepted on the wait list. And then they'll, it's typically it's two years because it takes two years to train, right? Um, and it's been shorter. Like 
year or something um, for individual dogs. So it's been better. So that's when you're going to get that you know, that list. And they might check in with you every now and then just to see if anything's changed or you know what what's going on. So. Um, so to clarify the application, you can't. You said you can't submit it until they're five years old. So she wouldn't get a dog until she I seven. Maybe it might be sooner. But we're gonna hit submit on, on for that fifth birthday. We're gonna have our questions ready and we're gonna hit submit. Great, right? we're gonna do it. Yeah. Yeah. Why so long? Well, they just think that the kids when the kids are older, they're better with the dog. Yeah, they just think their their cognition is just better. And there's and I also I have um. So AJ is certified. <clears throat> there's you can see on his best it's Assistance Dog International, and Assistance Dog International is the umbrella of all the surf dogs. So your um, your seeing eye dogs, your um, hearing dogs, like everything is under. And there are organizations that will take younger if you if you want something different. Um, so I have this. If you guys, you know, there there are organizations that will do specific for autism. There's organizations mm -hmm. that will do specific for seizures. Um, and if you think of like, you know, like I said, they don't do elopement, <clears throat> they don't do dogs for autism, but there are organizations that do. And so basically the child and the dog are tethered together and that removes the mouth dogs and you're gonna lay down and you're not gonna go anywhere, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? And so if you, if you have a kid and even kids that get out of the home and like mm -hmm. roam, you might even tether them at, at, in the house. So you know that they're not gonna go anywhere or if they're outside on a playground and you have another kid that you're, you know, dealing with inhaling with, then they're, that kid's not going to go anywhere because that Burmese dog is just going to lay down and, and just be right there. And they're trained specifically for, um, you know, for autism. And so there's, so Assistance Dog International. Another question that I get a lot too is um, people want the hypoallergenic, right? The allergies. These guys are shutters. I'm not going to lie. It's a, the floors are <laughs> a, a big issue. Um, and, um, and so, I've asked them before, are you ever going to do Labradoodles? And they said, no, um, we just don't like um, the temperament. Um, and so there are organizations in here that will do that, will have you know, those for you. Um, and so they, they just really feel like that they breed these dogs for health um, and temperament. And so this is, they, they had chocolates in for a while. Um, but chocolate is an excessive and it kept pulling some of the health things and they just didn't like the pureness that they were, you know. And so these dogs, and they're also bred on the smaller side. AJ is one of the bigger ones. But if they get a litter that's 90 uh, pounds, they won't even graduate them because um, these dogs are meant to be in public places and meant to be under tables and meant to be, you know, going everywhere, meant to go on an airplane, with you to Disney when you go, right? All of that. So. Um, yeah, so 60% of these guys graduate. So when you see a graduate, you know, they're, they're the cream of the crop. Um, but what they are doing now, they're, they're piloting it in Santa Rosa, is they're taking some of the, grad, the dogs that didn't graduate and they're training them to be therapy dogs. Um, so they can go into schools or go into nursing homes and they can still have a really good job, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not here yet, but I did sign up to be an evaluator for um, the therapy dog program. So. I'm, I'm really excited about that, that they can, you know, then, then use them. But so reasons they wouldn't graduate, um, again, the surfaces, um, if they can't control their barking, if they get too excited with other dogs, um, you know, if they won't go in an elevator. Well, you don't have an elevator in your house. It's not a problem, right? You know, but there's just certain things that like, but if you go to hotel, Disney, you're going to have to need an elevator or a hospital, right? And so there's just there's just certain things that they um, you know that they won't graduate. But his puppy razor, um, Chris, this was dog 13 for him, and you can he's still doing it. So you can imagine six years later he's still going, and um, he's amazing. And I asked him. He even came here because they love. I mean, it's such a it's such a family. It's such a family. It's he even came here on a Friday to see AJ at work because um, he just wanted to see you know his his successor, right? His, what this did. And so it's just amazing. And um, so I asked Chris, like, did you ever have any dogs that didn't graduate? And he was like, yeah, he was like, I had, I had a dog. He was like, I would just lay on him to be submissive. And he um, just never could. And it turns out, like I told you, they spread those litters out. The entire litter didn't make it. The entire <laughs> litter. And so that pairing, that pairing, they never bred again, right? Because right. everybody failed. And that's that's consistency, right? Because um, they were all like, 
you know, really good. So um, they won't take food out of the kids' hands. They won't eat off the floor. They're not allowed to eat off the floor. Um, you know, so just whatever things that you, you know, if you want them to sleep in the bed with the child and help move you know, bedtime routines, you know, they can, they can do that. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a oh, great. Yeah. So, great. so when you go to team training, um, so you get your invite to team training, right? You go to team training and um, the first three days, and they all look, they all look the same, you know, these dogs. Um, so the, for the first three days, you work with different dogs. You might work with five different dogs. And so they have two dogs in mind for you, probably a primary. Hmm. So they have two dogs in mind for you. So you work with these different dogs. And so I would just write down like who I work with and who my picks were because they all look alike. You know, you, they look <laughs> yellows and blacks. And, and so you figure out, you know, who you, some are familiar, but, um, and so I would just write down um, who I thought I worked well with. And, and there's some dogs that are like, you're good. You're really good. You're doing everything that you were just, and we don't match very well because I'm fast, you know, I have to be fast. And, yeah. and so, and some of the dogs, and, and some of the dogs just, I don't know, it just took a lot. And so, um, and so day three, it's usually around day three, after lunch, you go back out and they pass out dogs and they tell you, that's your dog. And everybody cries. I mean, and it, and it, and it just, and like the slow dog that took forever, you find out works in uh, a lockdown facility for boy, boys with abusive behavior, and he's just not going to do anything. Right, he's just going to be a great chill dog for all those boys that are like in there for bad behavior, right? And you find out what their jobs are. It's just like that's amazing, like what what they're doing. And so it is. And so like you just cry when you get your dog, and it's just they're so amazing with the matches, and they're so um, you know wonderful with that. And so and I told you my first dog um, passed with cancer, and so we get we get uh, recertified every year. And so when you get when you go and get your public access, like. If you as the mother is there, but the dad's not there, try to get dad to scoot in at the end because then he can get a quick public access too. Like well, you're going to brush him up on the commands that you have to do and he's going to give you the public access. And so that way the two of you can be the handlers. If you miss dad or you miss a caregiver, if you have a nurse or a nanny or somebody else that you want to be, you can catch them in. And so they come here um, usually every August. We meet at St. Vincent New Hope and we get we get uh, recertified every year. So we have to be licensed. Like we have a license that we carry, right? And they have those systems dog international on their vest, but these are not fake service dogs, right? And they get the tattoo on his ear. It's all it's all legal. One, four, five, eight, three. It's just a number. <laughs> right? That's special. Um, okay. He is special. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so they do you have to get it. So if there was somebody that you, you want to get uh, credentialed, you can you can pick that up in August. Or if you go back, you're going to work in two and if you go back to team training, which you're going to want to do and see all your people, because um, you'll re reunion with everybody, um, you can catch them and they can get you um, anybody that you want to get recertified. You know, with you. Um, they can do that. So, um, so um, I was going to say something. I lost my train of thought. Of where we were. But oh, so success is off. So you, so ideally you would plan on retirement, right? You would plan when when a dog is going to retire, like when they're kind of slowing down and maybe you, if here we they would burn out, right? They would just be like, oh, look, all these crazy kids are being <laughs> you know, and just burning out. Um, so you try to plan a retirement and, and my dog passed. And so um, we didn't get to plan a retirement. Within 30 days, I had a successor, a successor dog. So they don't leave you without a dog, right? Mm -hmm. I still had to apply. I still had to go through the all, I still had to do all these things because they still just want to check in and make sure nothing's changed and you know with horses and and all this stuff and so um but then they ended up evaluating their dogs they had team training coming and then and i was so uh i met i was so picky these are the things that i want and i had a list and i was so picky and they're like we've got a dog that's got all of those things and i'm like you're kidding so i got i got to go to team training in november and um, AJ's very stoic and he was different than my other dog. <clears throat> he was a little bit more demonstrative and a little bit more higher energy. And AJ's got all these layers and it just took a while to get to. And I had a really hard time with him in the beginning. I didn't think he was the dog. And I, I cried a lot. And my husband said, <clears throat> he's here, I'm there. And he's like, 
you just got to sleep with him. Just let him get in the bed with you and just sleep with him. You guys got to snuggle. And so I got, he got him at the bed and he like curled in his ball away from me. And I was over here and like, we just had, he, he felt it. I mean, he felt it. And, and, and it, it was just a, it was like a bet. Um, and then well, he might also sense you still mourning your, he did, he did, he, he just, he just felt, you know, my aloofness and he responded with aloofness. Mm -hmm. And so we just, we had trouble, um, in the beginning and then, and then we finally got a bond. And then when you come home, it takes, they've had a lot of transition, right? They've had a puppy raiser. They've been in this terrible boot camp. It's not terrible, but it's, it's jail sales, right? It's, it is. <laughs> They're a lot on, but, um, so, you know, they've, they've had a lot. And so then you come home and it just takes them a little while to figure out that this is a forever home. And I went to team training again, like three months later, um, to just see all your people because you love them. And my the dog stared. He, I thought he'd be excited to see the other dogs because they're all they in blood, right? They love each other. And he would not take his eyes off of me. He stared at me the whole time. And I think he was like, Mom, I've been working so hard for you and doing everything and you're turning me in like you're, oh, you're really turning oh he was scared he really thought he was being turned in i'm like no you have your forever home you're fine and that's what he said so is, is, is there like a probationary period where like all <laughs> like three bonds and they're like like someone says this is not a great match for me or they kind of check in or... so that's a good question it's a really good question so um it's kind of like bringing a baby home from the nipio I'm sure you people have experienced this. You're bringing this baby home from the you and, and you're scared and you're like, I'm going to break it because there's like so many things to do, right? Um, and so um, you you do, a, um, I think you do an at-home check-in. And so, and I messed up too. I was so excited when my husband and me, AJ, and we had a cat and I and I didn't plan the greeting, right? The cat attacked the dog, the dog was scared to death. Like I messed up, right? The second dog around and I did, I did things wrong, you know? And you, you just... <laughs> you just figure it all out. But these, so there's things you're supposed to do when you get home too. If you have other pets, if you have other family members, there's things just there's rules. There's things you have to do, and um, and then they check in with you. Um, first week you have um, phone call check ins, and then you you, and then it's like in two weeks we're going to check in again, and then it's in a month we're going to check in again, and so um, you do these you do these check ins, and so and any problem that you have. You, you contact them. Like, so we had our new certification in August. Um, our problem is AJ's not wanting to jump in my Jeep. And, and that problem's been getting bigger. And so that was just something I wanted them to see in person and help me with um, with him. And so um, so he has the athletic system to do it. He overthinks it. I'm going to clump my legs. So he overthinks it and gets himself worked up. And he jumps in and guess what? He clunks his legs. Because you you were so awkward about it, and so and and I'm not correcting him, right? I'm trying to you got this, you and Jacob, and if you did, and I'm just being all of my emotion goes right to that leash, right? Just like when I told you I was a loo, all of that emotion. The same thing with our horses, all that emotion goes right in, right? And so if I'm correcting him and making it, I'm going to make the situation worse. But I'm trying, you know, to make it really positive. And so I explained to our graduate coordinator Eric. And, and so we went out and we did it. And it was actually, he knew he was being tested. He knew that clipboard was out, so he knew. And actually it wasn't bad, but it, he did it. Eric's like, oh my goodness, I see what you mean. And I said, yes, this is actually good. Um, so he, he's giving you a treat now when he gets in, we're giving him a biscuit. I'm just making it. Is it any better? Um, I don't know. But he's been a biscuit, so <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. He did it. He made it in. But he doesn't like to be picked up either. He doesn't like all of the commands and and what you said with your daughter being nonverbal is going to be very important because um, nothing is gesture, right? I don't say AJ here, AJ sit, AJ up. And you get fined for that when you're training. You get fined fifty dollars every time. Mm -hmm. You also you also when you as the handler. Um, you stand tall. You don't like, and what do we do all day? We get eye level with our kids. That's what we do, right? Mm -hmm. All day we get eye level with our kids. I, I got fined all the time because I got eye level with the dog, right? You don't do that. <laughs> you stay tall. You're the strong handler, right? You're the, you know, the dog can be eye level with your kid, but you're, you know, you're that handler. You're the, you're the one in charge. And so I got in trouble with that, um, you know, all the time too. So because it is all verbal, right? That's something that they're going to have to work with you on is is being able to get those commands. And if she has ways that she can say it or show it, 
and then you echo it, right? You're the echo. You're the, uh, you're, yeah. you're the mm -hmm. voice. Yeah. And she does do some something, mm -hmm. and she does have some words, and mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, I'm optimistic. But if she has more, a sign, kind of if she has a sign, you know, if she wants a dog to come here, if she has a sign or an approximation, then then you would be the echo. And and the same thing for you. Like I let I let my kids, a lot of my kids know his words, and some of the kids have very soft voices, mm -hmm. and so if the gym's loud, you might not have heard them, and then I echo. You know, we echo that, you know, what they said. Yeah, but I'm also in a situation where I might not be there. Right. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know, the bond will team. the bond will form we'll and they'll out. figure it out. Yeah. They'll figure it out. No, it's so we should probably just jump on the back. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you do you do have um you do have written tests um every day, probably when you're team training, you take a written test. And they will grade you, and they <laughs> so, and they're you're, they're teaching you like, um, just training behaviors and different, just just different things that they do, um, with the dogs, and then and then you have um a big written test at the end, and then you have your public um access testing, um, and so um, you I think you go into stations and you do like fifteen you know different. 15 or 16 different commands um, with a dog. And um, you'll be a pro by then, by that time that you get to it, but you'll mess up a thing or two and, and it'll be fine. They'll work with you, you know, on it. But, and the same thing at home, you ask about, if you get a dog home and it's not a good fit, if you just feel like it's not a good fit, um, they will work on that with you too. And I had a family that um, they, um, their child had a lot of involvement and um, they had the dog and they just, I don't, they just didn't feel like their child was really benefiting that much. And so, um, and they weren't having, nothing was really wrong, but I think the, the child just wasn't as bonded, I think as they thought and the other siblings were and the purpose of the dog was being lost a little bit. And so they ended up turning the dog back in and then so they they will take the dog and then we um, place them. They'll get a different placement. Um, and then there was a dog. The dog actually did it was very slow. That moved slow. He he was being replaced as well because the family that he was at didn't maintain his weight and he was twice the weight that he should be. And so he got removed from them. And they tried to get you back on track with that and they tried to give you chances. But this family didn't. I think there are other things that they weren't really keeping up with on the training. And so the dog got pulled and then got replaced, you know, got got a different job. Um, and um it was good. It was a good, a good match the second time around. But um, and then there is a there's just occasions, I mean you'll you'll hear of it sometimes that like if people aren't um doing things the right way, you know, mm -hmm. the, the dogs will. Be removed, but they they don't like to do that. You know, they don't like to not have success with it. But there's also um, a commercial, a Kleenex commercial, a canine companion dog, a girl with Down syndrome getting getting her dog. It's a Kleenex commercial. Get your Kleenex out. It's like it's one of those like it's, it's a touching story. Um, but it's it's a sweet thing to see too. And that's and and some of the things that they go through in that just that little commercial, that little video will just help you. Oh, those are things that I want to say in my application too. It's really good. We can try to. We put all of this on the parent um, resources website, so I'll have links to um, that handout with all of the different um, organizations that do dogs, and I'll have um, the handouts that Teresa had, and I'll try to also find that that link that you're talking about. And, so, um, I just so I want to just. This is just something that I think is just always good to clarify too. The difference between a service dog, a therapy dog, and an emotional support dog. Do you, do you all know the difference between those? So a service dog is certified and trained with a specific purpose to help people with disabilities, um, such as visual impairments, mental illnesses, seizure disorders. Um, CCI doesn't do diabetes, but diabetes is one of those and this physical impairments. So they're trained to do a specific job, right? Your dog is gonna be trained to do a specific job 
for your child according to their needs, right? And that's why we're doing that two year wait because that dog's gonna be trained according to your needs. And that's why you've gone through all the steps of telling them about your child. A therapy dog is trained. So they're also trained to provide comfort and affection to people in hospice, disaster areas, retirement homes, hospitals, nursing homes, schools, and more, right? They're still trained, right? But not for that specific, but more for comfort and affection, right? An emotional support animal provides their owners with therapeutic benefits through companionship. They do not require training. There's, mm. They're not trained, right? But you may be screened by a mental health professional to see if you qualify. So that's why like people that have these emotional support animals, they're not trained, right? A therapy dog, you might see at school, you might see at the hospital, you might see places that they are trained and they have access to those places. They don't have access to go to a restaurant. They don't have access to get on a plane. They don't have that public access, but just those places that they're providing the comfort for, right? And then, and then our service dog is the one that will be in all public places. They cannot be asked to not be there, right? But if you want the child, the dog to go to school, the dog can't go to school with the child because the child can't manage it, right? It would be a distraction. But if you want to take the dog in for special events or special things, you are the licensed handler that will take the dog, right? So your team is the parent that's checked up on public access, the child and the dog, that's your team. You know, so you can't just go anywhere with the dog. You have to have your team together, right? So AJ and I, <clears throat> um, technically, I, if I'm out in public, I should have a team with me too. I should have an individual that I'm working with, right? Um, so I can't really, I shouldn't take him to the grocery store. I shouldn't take him places, right? So I don't, I do leave here and go to a gym. And so I usually ask when I join the gym, I do have a service dog. Is it okay if I bring him here with me, if I'm coming after work? And they say yes, but they could say no, right? They could say, no, we don't want a dog here. And he stays at the front desk. So he doesn't bother anybody, you know, anybody there, um, and that's another thing too, like they say that the application process takes many steps. That's one of the things I tell them, I go to a gym. Well, Chris went to a gym too. Chris taught him how to behave at a gym with noise and music and all that stuff going on. And so that's just another thing that they say that checks the box for Teresa, um, if they're looking at, you know, a dog for, for her, but yeah. So what questions do you guys have any, any other? We kind of talked about it a little bit, like with a service dog. I mean, if you go on a trip. Oh, did I tell you what these costs? That's a big thing. <laughs> AJ is valued at $50,000. Okay. Canine Companions is a non for profit organization. You pay nothing for the dog. Oh, okay. Okay. You pay them <laughs> right. Um, so they, they have, um, but in Santa Rosa, one of their biggest funders is, you know, Dean Coons, is anybody ready in his book? Mm -hmm. So he got a dog, Trixie, when um, Trixie was released because of an elbow. So Trixie was three, she had a medical reason. And so he and his wife, they didn't, they've never had kids, they took Trixie. And so he has so many dogs, Trixie was a golden retriever. He has so many dogs in his books. And so he gives a lot um, to Canine and Canines. And then and they're just like us, they have to do fundraising and um, different things to support, but you don't pay anything. And that's one of the things that um, there's no barrier, right? There's no financial barrier. And so that's, and, and, and now that they have the facilities for team training, you don't have to um, pay to stay anywhere when you go to choose, right? That's covered for you. And they, um, they, have, they have breakfast out and then they have these amazing volunteers that come in and they put a spread out every day for lunch. I mean, I mean a spread. So you probably don't even need dinner after you've had all this food too. Mm -hmm. So, and then when you stay in these dorms, if you're like, I gotta go, I gotta run an errand and do some stuff and Liam's exhausted, I don't really wanna take him. And people go like, well, I'll watch Liam for you. And, and you go run your errands. Like you, right. you become family to each other. You start taking, <laughs> right. I mean, but, but they do, like, I mean, it's, but you parents bond together, right? During your during your two weeks that you're there, because you, you know, every time they're crying down moment where it's not working well, and every time they're like, my kids not doing good, and every, you know, I had my I had, I had crying days too, right? I had a lot of crying days, um, but it just it's hard, but it's good and it's amazing. So, um, and so that's you know, there's I can the Indiana T9 is a network. 
um, here, um, their application costs, it, it's like a $100 for the application. And I think their dogs are $1,500. And um, we worked with some of their dogs at St. Vincent. We let them come in and work around our kids, around their equipment and things. And they just, they get a lot of dogs in the pound and just train them. They do a little bit of breeding, but not like these guys. And it's, I was not impressed and I would not. Mm -hmm. And I've had, a, I've had friends who've gotten their dogs and they've had to turn their dogs back because their dogs are squirrel and they're gone. And, you know, taking food from the kids, taking foods from the table, um, um, you know, and, and it's just like, this is not a trained dog and they've had to get the dogs back. And so not, um, I'm sure some people have had a success with them, but um, I, it's, and they only do, so when I talk to you about corrections, the, po the positive and the negative correction, I can only just positive. So I've been at places where an ICANN dog was chewing on the table leg on the Bible study, and you just ignore it. And you ignore it and you try to distract it with something else, but they don't give correction. And it's just like, if you if your kid's bad and acting bad and you just ignore it, are they gonna stop acting bad if you don't have what it's right? Um, so it's not my favorite you know, place. The other thing is if you are you know, looking into the Assistance Dog International and all these organizations, um, a lot of them cost money. Like Paws for Cause in Ohio, it's $30,000. You have to have 15,000 in the bank before you put on a wait list, right? Um, and they'll help you fundraise some of it, but um, but it's it, you know, and they do they do the hypoallergenic dogs there, um, but it's just you know, and then and then then your dog passes, and what do you have to do? You have to do another thirty thousand dollars dog, and the same thing with the one for autism. Insurance doesn't cover that. Mm -mm. Like that. No, um, and and so you, and then and there's even organizations in here if you're like I have a dog and I'd really like for my dog to be a service dog and get them certified you can do it you, there's organizations that will do that too but you have to pay for it right you have to pay for it and then you don't know if they're truly going to pass or not so um so I you know I, I think the quality of dogs the breeding and just that there's no barriers with cost you know I think is that's they're just they're, they're amazing and 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 the team in Ohio um, a lot of them have been there for their careers. Like there's such, there's such a warm, safe, just wonderful group of people. And they really, um, they really like the challenges of like, how do we make this work? Or, or, you know, they can't use their right side as well as the left side, but let's, let's see how we can you know, make this work. And so they're, they're just wonderful with um, figuring, you know, figuring things out. We have like a minute or two to show some AJ's. I mean, what do you what do you want to see? What I want to see him come and if he gets something, he won't drop it intentionally. I think that's amazing. So if your child drops something, you can't pick it up off the floor. He won't. AJ, so that would be fun. Those are your Oh, She's going to show up. Hey, Jim, guess. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Hey, so he will, um, he can, you know, bring things. He should never drop anything. He doesn't have a drop. Oh, I should have. Um, I can talk about a couple. Um, these are his commands. So these are all the things that he, um, all of his commands. So there's one of the last things that I can look at those. But, um, so like I said, there's about 40, um, 40 different um, commands um, that he can do. Um, and they're different per those. dog or are they all? They're all the same. the same. They're all the same. What's the one where he just puts his head on your feet? Hey, Jim. I'm just kidding. Yeah. So if you're at a restaurant, you know, this is what he would park. He would just park where he's out of, out of the way. And like I said, they're not allowed to eat food off the floor because if you're at a restaurant and a child over there is like 
it's all good. We have a lot of students over here, like, nibbling up on the floor. And, and um, does he sometimes sneak up food off the floor of my house? Yeah, yeah. Like, he gets in trouble, right? <laughs> but one of the things, um, so the therapists all use AJ. They're, 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 um, they can all incorporate them. We're trying to have a couple of our um, techs be the handler for him. Because what was happening a little bit, and I love everybody here, that they weren't correcting him, right? They don't want to, they don't want to punish him. And so if you're not ever corrected, you're not going to do your best work, right? You have to have a compromise if you're not. And so Ms. Teresa can't always be the mom voice in the room, right? So we're trying to make it more successful. And also too, it allows the therapist to focus their treatment on a child, and then we can have kind of have the icing on the cake and brought in, right? And, and help um, that work. AJ, let's go. Um, so if you, um, if you want him to just do a little, so just just the head on the lap be there until I told him AJ oh. um, and then he can do he can do a full on the lap um so if you if your kid is fancy and can't sit still and um, AJ oh, um, so if you if your child needs that compression, <laughs> if your um, AJ, if your child needs that compression or um, you, you know just just a little hug and a little visit, um, they can do that. And 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 then this is when if you if your child is in a chair, they're going to want to figure that out because every chair is different. You know, so AJ, when our kids are in chairs here. It takes a little bit of him to figure out because they're different heights, they're different mm -hmm. sizes, they're different. You know, he's not you know with the same you know one um, all the time. AJ, off. off. See you next oh, time, buddy. Boy. <laughs> um, so when your child turns eighteen, um, they can get their own. They can be certified to have it be their own dog, yeah. and they can give it to me. So if they're going to go to college, if they're going to you know whatever, they would have the dog um, that would then you know be able to go with them as their full. You don't have to be the facilitator anymore, but you have to be 18. Teresa? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm on Zoom. Um, I was just curious, how does it, is it possible um, when you have siblings and both of them, like I have two autistic girls, does, would one dog, do things for both children or would it only be for one child? Um so I I've, I've had kids um there are kids in the in the central Indiana East area where they have two dogs. Um so each child would get their dog. Okay. And so that's when I talk about those questions when you do that application, that's going to muddy your application and you're going to get a no. Um, so you, it has to be one child um, per application. Okay. And the same thing is like if I've I've had I have a friend who's a physical therapist and she has a son with autism, and she sent the application in because she thought oh I can use the dog in my practice and then the dog can be my son's dog you know when I'm not at work and on the weekends and she got a no because it muddied it it you know she could have gotten a dog just for her. He could have gotten a dog just for him, but she muddied that application and she got that no. So you have to, you would have to pick. And that, you know, in, in which if you did both at the same time, depending on their age, or one and then the other. Okay. And they're okay. both the uh, their other who doesn't have the dog is probably going to benefit from the dog being there, but it's not going to be that service dog, right? Right. And the same thing with siblings, you, you know, the siblings, the, the family is going to benefit from the dog, right? But the dog has a specific purpose for that specific pairing, right? Even when you bring the dog home, like I said, there's lots of rules. Um, so when your child is at school, the dog needs to be in its crate, mm. right? Because you can't be loving on the dog and the dog's bonding with you and the dog's not bonding with the child. And so the dog's going to be in the crate. You're going to give it food, give it opportunities to go, you know, um, out and hurry, go to the bathroom, but you're going to give it minimal interaction until your child gets home off that bus and that dog's going to go crazy happy, right? And that's what we want to happen. And so there's a lot of rules too when you first go home that the other kids um, can't be too involved, right? Especially if you have typicals at home, you can't let them be too involved because that dog has a specific 
job and placement. And they'll, they'll talk about all that with you, but um, yeah, that's a good question. Well, thank you. Just to follow up with that, how long is that like for siblings, like you said, like they can't be too involved because I understand like the dog has to bond with the child whose job it is, yeah. but how long is that for, or like with the dog in the crate, like that while the kid's at school, like, is that a certain length of time kind of that that initially has to occur and then mm -hmm. like the dog can kind of have a little more freedom or is there, or is that just kind of an initial thing? Is there... They're probably going to tell you like a six month thing um, that they probably want to have you know at about that length of time, and and you can have like um, like um, like when I when I brought my first dog home, my kids were at home and I let them go to the store and each pick out a toy that they could play with with the dog, you know, and they would get a little bit of time to to just play with the dog, right? Um, and it's a little different for me because. It's just kind of off work when we're at home, but mm -hmm. we still have rules at home, right? He wouldn't ever walk out the door if I open it up and I'm carrying my groceries, right? He would only walk out when I asked him to walk out and he would never eat off the floor at home. He doesn't get on my table at home. I mean, there's just, there's still rules at home that we follow, um, but, but you can, you know, you can have, the other siblings can have interaction, but they just can't be the primary, right? You want most of that time with the person that they're working for because you want them to understand what that, and, and I will tell you, they'll bond at team training. The dog will not, it, they'll bond at team training, but you just have to help not, you have to keep that bond fostered, right? You don't want, you don't want that to boost it. Okay. Um, also, I um, we watch Sesame Street here and these dogs were on Sesame Street, um, like currently. <laughs> <laughs> like on the replay there's they have a puppet dog on there and the puppet dog is looking for work and he's trying to figure out what his job is Aww. and so the whole show okay. and it's actually the cti dogs because you could see the canine oh, companions on there yeah um fun. thing so it's it's on pbs it's on one of like the playbacks so if you want to share that or whatever with yeah <laughs> it's really fun. yeah thanks for sharing <laughs> yeah do zoomers have any other questions you guys were good questions Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And we're, we'll put all uh, we'll put a lot of stuff on the on um, some links too for you as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us, guys.